Hello, welcome to Rebel Base, IGN's weekly Star Wars. Pack it in! So this week we're speaking to the voice of Darth Maul himself, Peter Serafenemlin. It's like someone was saying to me, are you going to be in the new Star Wars film? Yes. Mm. And yeah. uh, I, I'd, again, I'd love to be. Yeah. Mm. However, I just, I'm just excited that they're making they're new coming. Star Wars yeah, films yeah, yeah, and yeah. they seem like they're going to be great. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I love that teaser oh, trailer. Reason, uh, yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. I mean, I've just got goosebumps. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just trying to keep calm about it and not yeah. get too excited. Yeah. Because I'm like you. It's just yeah. I cannot wait for it. But then, I mean, you know, you were in Phantom Menace, and that is one that isn't you know so celebrated as much. So yeah. How, I it's, mean, but then you are you know, really good in it, and then the character well, Darth no, Maul is. Like, you know, no, but the character of Darth Maul is a, is a character that people say that was a really, really good yeah. part of Phantom Menace. I think. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, it's mainly down to Ray Park. You He's know? amazing, and, yeah. And, uh, but, and, you know, my involvement was so, I mean, it's so lucky. It's like I won a competition, really. Yeah. You know? <laughs> How did it come about? I just, I auditioned for it. Wow, I okay. auditioned, and, like, that was it. I just auditioned. And they, yeah. like, they, like, thought Ray Park's voice wasn't right for the yeah. part, and yeah. then I just auditioned. He's got auditioned. quite a strong Cockney accent, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he's got, he's got quite a soft voice right. as well, for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so you know, and I did that, and it was like I I did like three. It, we recorded it like probably over like three days, and recorded wow. with George Lucas you right. know? in the room with you. In the, not only in the room, it, he sits in the booth with you. <laughs> so like usually, you know, you're like this close. To <laughs> like, no, 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 seriously, you. he's like sitting like there, right, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> and it's that's an that is that that has never happened before or since yeah. you know and it's weird it's like if you're recording a voiceover you, you know everyone knows you've seen it it's like the the, 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 the actors are in the yeah. in the little booth and everybody else is behind the glass listening yeah. to it on the speakers but George yeah. was just mm. I don't even think was listening to it on the headphones I thought well that's cool you know that's I mean I was so nervous and because you know I mean it's George Lucas of course oh, yeah, yeah, George yeah. Lucas yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, look. I mean, I don't want to rubbish that film, and uh, and you know, of course, it's just you know, whatever. That's all been yeah. said. But like, you know, I think a thing about it is like, what is is just even right. His world, the world he's mm. created, yeah. and the characters that he populates it with. Yeah. And the names he gives things. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. That's like you know, even in the even in the Phantom Menace, the the all the all the characters have just got so, yeah, and you you, you 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 notice it as well when you when you're playing like the Lego game where you see the yeah. toys or whatever yeah. and you think, Oh, I remember that like character that had like one line yeah. and yeah. it's got a really yeah. cool name and yeah. you think wow George Lucas is amazing at thinking of names <laughs> you know I mean just think of all the names that he has made up that yeah. are so, part of our like folklore yeah. you know yeah. it's time for another edition of Force Feedback then and it's actually what people have started calling it as well because James Trawley writes in and says yeah, hey but guys if you, if you call it something people will then call it that it doesn't mean that thing is <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what that means? Hey guys, love the show. A little bit of force feedback for you. I just watched the bit where you talk about Ray being Han and Leia's daughter. So this was last week we were talking about what is the evidence that Ray is actually Han Solo's mm. daughter. This would be so cool. And that would go with what you said before about her being the main Jedi character. And it leads her to Finn in the desert of Jakku where he is realizing he's getting force powers with a whole awakening thing. And she could help train him in his new powers. Then he also says, although this is starting to sound a little bit like the plot of Star Wars Rebels with Kanan and Ezra. And that is pretty much that as well. But he also goes on then to say, P.S. you need to get matching Rebel tattoos at Celebration next year. So they're focusing mainly on the feedback section. Not the tattoo bit that we're definitely getting. What would we get? I'm getting matching tattoos. You've got no space left. I've got loads of space there. <laughs> there. <laughs> palm of my Legs. hands. Yeah, my palm tongue. of my hands. <laughs> what would we get? Don't know. Something maybe like the, like the Empire of the Hand logo on the back of our necks. That's good. Anyway, Connor Smith has written in. <laughs> Connor Smith has written in. Um, what do you guys think of the idea of Darth Vader appearing in an anthology film? I haven't heard that idea discussed as a topic on your show, but with Rogue One being centered around the idea of stealing the Death Star plans, mm. it really makes sense to me. 
As a side note, I like the idea of Finn being the son of Lando, which we said last week, yeah. as it gives a reason to why he would have Luke's lightsaber. That's because Lando was the head of Cloud City and Luke lost his lightsaber there, so it does somewhat seem reasonable. So let's focus on um, what Connor said about yeah. Darth Vader appearing in an anthology movie. And we kind of addressed this before, like yeah. if these anthology movies, at least the first one we know is filling in gaps yeah. in the old movies, like in the timeline, we're going to encounter this situation where they might have to recast people or we might get familiar characters yeah. um, in a similar time period than we've seen before. And it's easier with people like Boba because yeah. you use the outfit. Kind of easier with Vader as really well because yeah. you can still get James Earl Jones to do the vo voice yeah. and you can use the costume. I think he might turn up. He definitely will turn up. I, I he definitely that, will. I definitely confirm. Um, but like, if you're doing, like, as he says, like, if you're doing something centered around stealing the Death Star plans, it's got to be in that, surely. Yeah, because it's going to be like in his back pocket. He's basically yeah. Andy Garcia <laughs> in um, <laughs> Ocean's Eleven at the end. Yeah. It's just going, ah. Oh, yeah. Should have got with Julia Roberts. Yeah. Something like that. I think I think it'll definitely happen. I'm in. Wow, you've gone all in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, final bit of force feedback thing comes from David Hall of Solid Brick Studios, who writes in and says, big fan of you guys. I recently made a full on recreation of the second episode seven trailer into Lego form and would love to hear your opinion on it. It's so good. Yeah, I'm quite flattered he's a big fan of us because yeah. we've done nothing that good. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'd already seen this before he sent it yeah, in as well. Yeah, it's so good. It's just so good and it's became really, really popular. So we'll just play a little bit of that for you now. And if you have anything you want to send in to us, then make sure you do it rebelbase at IGN.com. So Star Wars then has inspired an entire world of merchandise. There's a Star Wars toaster now, which looks pretty good. Um, but we fell into a little bit of an Etsy hole this week by looking Speak at... Speak for yourself, mate. Yeah, <laughs> by looking at some of the weirdest stuff. And it all started with this lightsaber cheese knife and wine stoppers here that we found on the internet. Um, I think a couple of sites were doing stories on them because they're just like, it's a lot of really homemade stuff. Um, if you know what Etsy is, it's sort of like a craft website that people can set up their own shops and sell the different stuff. And there's a lot of Star Wars stuff on there. Um, so we've been sifting through it, starting sifting with through it. sifting through the most weird stuff that we found, starting with the cheese knife and wine stoppers, which are actually quite expensive, but they are nothing compared to the 3D printed melted Darth Vader helmet. <laughs> which is $4.99, um, which uh, boasts, once you have one, you'll never be without it. And it's basically... Could you not, does that not apply to anything you purchase? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so weird. It's like a little small version of the melted Darth Vader helmet from the Force Awakens trailer. $4.99. On, on, on the topic of melted Darth Vader helmets, yeah. as we often are, um, this week earlier on, I'll find it so you can drop it in now, yeah. is the image of the original one they burnt in Return of the Jedi. Right, okay. And I think it was made probably out of fiberglass or something. Right. And, because the fiberglass is like, through the heat, it's like transformed into her. What? So it's like this old, hurry, Darth Vader helmet I face. Don't I don't want that. I don't want that It life. almost me, made me feel a little bit sick. Yeah, I don't like that. Anyway, moving on to something a little bit more lighthearted and um, savoury. Um, not savoury, the crayons. R2-D2 crayons. Yay. Uh, these are, for the princely sum of £2.67, you yeah. can get an eight pack of cute and colourful crayons. Quote, will make a wonderful party favour or a great gift for a budding artist. Now this shop as well is actually quite cool and they do like Lego figures, they do like other different things, but I just love all these little R2D things. And £2.67 as well, that's nothing. Yeah, they also do crayons in the shape of bandages. <laughs> Don't know why you'd want, and a mini man. Mini man <laughs> looks a lot like a Lego mini fig, oh, but really? legally distinct. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all about the R2D2 mini crayons. Yeah, next up, this is my favorite things, needle felted Ewoks. Um, so there's this one. Uh, but there's also, <laughs> <laughs> there's also uh, Made For You by Jackie, uh, which is a shop on there, and she makes a lot of cool stuff. But there's a couple of them that I just can't stop looking at. Look at the little baby Ewok one. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Are they real human teeth? <laughs> so that one behind us, that is made by made by West, and that's fourteen pound fifty. As needle felted Ewok Star Wars series, um, and it has, it has two of Jackie's baby's teeth. <laughs> She puts something over herself in no, everything she makes. No, that's made by West, not made by Jackie. If you wanted to go a little bit more upmarket, you go to Made For You by Jackie. And she, these ones, $37.99 and $55.99 for the baby one. So, I think they're cute. They, I mean, are they cute? They are cute, but in a terrifying, terrifying way. I wouldn't put that in my kid's bedroom, would you? Um, I don't know. My mum used to collect clowns when I was a child. So Serious? I, I grew up in a house full of clowns. Ugh. So... That's terrifying. Haven't killed Almost anyone. Haven't killed anyone yet. Not quite as terrifying as that. Then. Uh, what you got? What's next? This next is Star Wars five-piece wooden utensil set for twelve pound <laughs> fifty. That's pretty good. Twelve pound fifty. So let me look. Um, so in this set, you get four wooden spoons and a fish slice. Um, <laughs> Star Wars ma mainly, fish slice. Mainly spoons. Yeah. Um, as each set is hand burnt and made to order, please be understanding of any slight imperfections or differences from the picture designs. So basically, they're um, all one of a kind. Yeah. Because they're really cool, so they've got... They're all um, one of a kind because she's not taking her time with them, she's bashing them out. So uh, they could all have just little imperfections all over them. It's £12.50, I think they're pretty good if you want a set of wooden spoons. Yeah. yeah, and also because it's burnt in, it's not going to make them unsanitary. Mm. And also does one that's been breaking bad. Nice. Uh, next up, I've got, this is just, I just found this really odd. Um, is a vinyl record clock of Star Wars. So it's actually, it's pretty good because it's got like Darth Vader and Luke sort of battling it out. But I just find the entire thing really strange. Like, so they say, we made our clocks from old used vinyl records. Thanks to our passion to music, we give a new life for used and forgotten vinyl records. We make them functional, beautiful, and great looking part of your interior. Still, music fans should not be afraid. We create our clocks from records that are no longer playable. That's why albums may have some scratches. Now, it's, it's really well made, but I just find it really odd. Why do you find it odd? Well, because I think it's quite cool that they're cut out because a lot of people make um, vinyl clocks. It's like a thing you always find down like car boots, yeah, just yeah, yeah. the record. Yeah, I think it's, it's quite good. They've gone to the effort to like make it into an actual piece. Yeah, but I just what, why is it why is there a record though? I don't get it. Like that's the thing that bothers me. Is they've you're gone, overthinking. Yeah, it. I really am. Well, you want that record to be something Star Wars related, don't you? <laughs> I don't know. Do you need it to be more conceptually tight? Yeah, it does. It doesn't work for me for some reason because I think it's good, but why is it a record? Why is it? Why is that good? I don't know. I'm struggling with it. I'm struggling with You're it. You're overthinking it, mate. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't argue it. Accept. Um, <laughs> what have you got? This one I think you'll like. I actually really, really, really like this. Um, Chewbacca bandolier guitar strap. Yeah. So you can rock out like Chewie. That's pretty good. So the f iconic Chewie bandolier is, you know, they just built that onto a guitar strap. Yeah. Not much more to say about that one, but I think it is actually pretty cool. How much that? 35 quid. That is thirty-five if you're in a English band, pounds. If you're in a nerd band, imagine that, like rocking. If you play in a cantina. Next, uh, I've got Star Wars Lego Button Hall, twenty-five pound thirty-two pence, and this is like, even though it's weird, it's still very cool, and uh, it's got a really nice little story with it as well, because it says I handmade these for my own wedding and got so many lovely comments about them, I decided to set up shop. Oh. The pictures show Yoda slash Darth Vader slash Obi Wan, but I can make any character that you would like as long as it's available. And that's from a bride less ordinary. She does a lot of like wedding stuff. And it's really cool. It's weird, but very cool. That's the thing, like for weddings, those little like favors that you have to put on everyone's table. Yeah, that is a good idea. Well, like weddings as well. Like, are boring. Weddings are really boring. So if you can spruce up your wedding with some Star Wars, that's what I would do. Next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you tell that to your friends. So. Okay. Um, so Star Wars toilet target. Segwaying from weddings into so good. urinal functional decoration. This is one of my favourite things. Um, Star Wars toilet targets cost three pound eighty three. Do you have a potty training boy in your house <laughs> or a girl? How about what? a potty? No, not a girl. How would you? That's not. You're I not... wouldn't know about those sort of things, Gav. So you're, well, you're not training her right if you're getting her to go onto those. Perfect. Do you have a potty training boy in your house? How about a potty trained boy that has a hard time aiming? Yeah. Maybe you have a man in your house that could use a refresher course, or and you are tired of cleaning that toilet before you use it. These targets are for you. Stay on target. Nice. Stay on target. I really like these. They're so silly. Three pound eighty-three. This is stick Don't put them up there. Why? Well, you, you've got to aim the there. Where are you aiming? Into the toilet. Yeah, that is in the toilet though. But you're aiming the Quite top. high up there. But would you be able to aim down like that? Oh no, you would, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, they put them a bit high. You're right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Star Wars light switch decal, £2.67. Um, it's a bit odd. Uh, it says light side, dark side, choose wisely. And you can just stick them over the top of your uh, things. 
uh, I don't know. I kind, I kind of like them. Stand size light switch, Star Wars decal. Bring back any boring light switch with this decal. But when it's dark, you can't read it. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> next up is X-Wing ring. This is this really is amazing. This is amazing. This is spruce up your wedding. Yeah. Um, so it is a quite a, um, this is made, it's a gold, silver, platinum and palladium ring made mm. to order. And it's a very ornate wedding ring um, in the shape of an X-Wing. They do R2-D2 ones as well. They're so beautiful. But how much are they? How much is that X-Wing one? So that one is £663. How much? Which, you know, if you were buying a, a wedding ring, that's not how much are the one. wedding rings. As much as you want to spend. Is Depends it? how much you love the person. That's not true. Depends of course it's not true. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm single, so I wouldn't know, mate. Cheers. Bring it out. Pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and next, then, is the Star Wars garter. Uh, so this is another sort of wedding thing. Why have you picked on wedding stuff? <laughs> I really don't know. It was an accident. You're trying to tell me something. There's just lots on there. I just don't want to be alone anymore, Daniel. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think an X-Wing ring is going to help. <laughs> yeah, I turned to my first date with a Star Wars Lego garter. Oh yeah, I got you this present. I hope that's all right. Don't worry, I got our party favour sorted. <laughs> yeah. So this is from Oula La Boudoir. And uh, <laughs> so if it's quite, I think it's quite good. Perfect for any bride with a Star Wars theme to their wedding or a secret love for the best sci-fi films ever. The garter is made from slender ivory vintage style lace with an overlay of blue satin ribbon. Um, this one shows Leia and Chewbacca, but I can do pretty much any character you wish. And that's £35.99. What's the last one you got? So it is a Star Wars China tea plate I love by these. Absolutely Lavinius love yeah. Tea Party. Yeah. Um, so what it is, it's a retro vintage plate with brown, red and black pattern, which I've added an R2-D2 to. I do like how chintzy they are mixed yeah. with um, Star Wars imagery. Yeah, it's good. definitely. It's really good because I think they're like old style sort of like vintage plates with just like little sort of it's Star a perfect Wars wedding on, yeah. gift. Why? It's not wedding. That's not wedding. Could be. Well, I, well, I'm not getting married anytime soon. You might be, but I'm not. I'm not so. Yeah. Well, those are the weirdest things that we've found on Etsy to do with Star Wars. What have you found? Let us know, rebelbase at IGN.com.